So let me show you this uh, video because I think this is the best way to explain it. Um, if you don't know who Andrew Shear is, uh, it's this dude over here. He was the um, he was the guy that was running up against um, Justin Trudeau in the last election. He was a leader of the Conservative Party, failed miserably. Um, he's just this. I mean, he's a nice guy, dork. You know, is what he really is. And you know, um, he put this 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 video out here. And I think it's a pro he's probably the right guy to do this because because he, he's such a kind, friendly sort of face, and he's got a good way of projecting stuff. There's, there's a reason why I'm, I'm never going into politics. People have often asked me, Rich, why don't you run for prime minister? Why don't you fix things? Blah, 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 and all this thing. First of all, one, I wasn't born here, so I can't. And two, I'm not dishonest. Like, I'm not a POS, so I can't, I can't get into politics. It's just not in me. Like, I'm just honest. It's just, I call it like I see it, and people don't like that. They want to be lied to is basically what, um, you know, people that vote, is what it boils down to, is they want to feel warm and fuzzy about bullshit that they really can't deliver on. So this is, you know, this is like the code in the matrix, guys. This is unplugging from the lines. This is, you know, this is certainly a line with the stuff that I talk about. So let's play this video real quick. And I'm going to offer some commentary on what exactly is going on and, and how this is going to affect people in Canada. Did you have to ask anybody's permission to watch this video? Of course not. That would be ridiculous. But the liberals have a piece of legislation that is going to give the government a lot of control over what you can see and post online. I want to talk to you about free speech today. Censorship, it's everywhere. Whether it's Russia today, all Canadians, or me, censorship is back in fashion. This is Bill C-11. This piece of legislation will expand the powers of something called the CRTC. Now, what's the CRTC? You might not have ever heard about it. Well, if you've ever wondered why you can't get certain television stations or watch certain shows on Canadian cable packages, it's because in Ottawa, there is a group of people and they make decisions on what is safe for Canadians to watch. And the Liberals want to expand that into the internet. Imagine that there's a government agency in Ottawa that makes decisions for you to protect you from watching things that might make you un-Canadian all of a sudden. It took the children 40 minutes to locate Canada on the map. Large, anyone can miss Canada, all tucked away down there. Under this bill, they will be able to make new regulations. Regulations don't have to pass through Parliament. With the stroke of a pen, the CRTC can make new rules about what you can post and what you can see online. They're even going so far to start to regulate what users who make revenue off of their YouTube channels have to comply with. It is simply impossible to regulate a platform like YouTube without also regulating creator content. It's like promising not to regulate books while regulating what can be sold in bookstores. It so... I don't know who that guy is, but I sat in a chair like that in Parliament uh, in, in the province of Ontario at Queen's Park um, for a bill that they were introducing in 2012. I know exactly what that guy's doing. I've been there. I've done it. I'm going to talk more about it at the end of the video, but let's just carry on just so you understand this. Again, this has got half a million views, right? Like this is picking up steam will undermine your ability to create content and have other people see it. It's going to affect what videos uh, come up in your YouTube stream. It's going to affect what uh, people are allowed to post on social media sites, all in the name of protecting you. But hold on, let's go back a second. This isn't just about Bill C-11 or the CRTC. This is about free speech. Freedom of speech used to be a unifying principle that both the left and the right would agree on. But as the radical left gets increasingly angry and intolerant, they're no longer interested in promoting their ideas or debating yours. They just try to stifle anyone who disagrees with them. So just to add to that, people don't want to hear your opinion anymore. They want to hear their opinion coming out of your mouth. I'm just going to say that again. These, these, these people that are trying to control the narrative, information, ideas, anything that might contradict their narrative information or ideas. They do not want to hear your opinion. They want to hear their opinion coming out of your mouth. And this is what they're, this is what they're doing. Again, YouTube is like hitting this from the angle of, well, if you're a Canadian YouTuber, you're not going to get reach anymore and you're not going to get ad revenue. Um, again, I'll talk about all this and how it's going to impact me potentially in the future. But, but, but this guise of like, you know, Canadian um, content, 
that's not the reason behind it. There's always a story behind the story, right? And like those that have unplugged understand that component. Those that are still plugged in, they're just like sleepwalking through life. Oh, okay, whatever he says, boss, I'll just, you know, I'll vote for that. Spurred on by the views of psychology professor Jordan Peterson. They drowned out his talk at McMaster University in March. And that's a hallmark of big government, isn't it? A telltale sign that a government is getting too big and too intrusive into our lives is always that it attacks free speech. When you go back and look at authoritarian regimes, they always start with attacking freedom of expression. And it's always done in the name of protecting you. You go back to the French Revolution, where, where people were sent to the guillotine for speaking out against the atrocities committed during the revolution. Look at the Soviet Union, uh, East Germany. Even the Berlin Wall was originally called the anti-fascist wall. It wasn't sold to the citizens of East Berlin as a symbol of oppression designed to keep them inside a broken communist system. It was sold to them as a protection against an external threat. When big governments take away rights and liberties, they never tell their citizens that it's to make their life miserable. They always say it's to protect them or that it's for their own good. And that's exactly what the liberals are doing as well, creating a phantom bogus threat that they need to protect us from. And so they're going to give themselves massive power to regulate the internet. There is no question that the world is changing rapidly and getting more dangerous. Nous avons besoin de nouveaux outils, c'est pour ça que nous investissons une nouvelle façon de garder les gens en sécurité dans un monde. Freedom of expression and freedom of speech are so important because that's what gives you the right to argue for your point of view. And when you go back and look at the course of human history, it's always societies and governments that stifle free speech where innovation and human rights are also stifled. The only way we can discover truth is if we have our ideas tested and debated. And only when our ideas or our beliefs are put through that rigorous scrutiny and come out unscathed on the other side, can we be sure that something is true? We must make sure we live in a society where even if we don't like what's being said, we protect people's right to say it. That healthy debate of ideas, that clash of perspectives. That's what produces better results. Now, Justin Trudeau tells us to just trust him that this isn't about limiting fundamental rights and liberties. This is just about protecting you. Mm -hmm. Just trust him that he won't abuse this new power that he's giving his government. This is the same guy who froze the bank accounts of grassroots donors who are supporting protests for freedom. This is the same guy who interfered in a criminal court case and fired his attorney general when she wouldn't go along with his corruption. This is the same guy who used the COVID pandemic as an excuse to give a massive contracts to his friends at the WE organization. And this is the same guy who has increased funding to his friends at the CBC, sending them more of your tax dollars and creating a media subsidy program. Now he wants to be trusted with this new power. But the point is, it's not even just about Justin Trudeau. No government should have the power to control what you can see and post online. That's why we need to protect free speech. That's why this is important that every Canadian should be very, very concerned about this. It's important that you get engaged on C-11. Write your member of parliament. Let them know that you are opposed to the government having more power to control what you can see and post online. Social media is all about an interaction, so please leave comments below while you still can. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. All right, so we can take that out. I believe there is a link here. Um, you know what? I'll I'll get it after this video is over, and I'll post it in the description. Um, it's it's a very simple link. You just click it; it opens up. And if you live in Canada, you put you put in your postal code, and then it pre-fills all this information that you can send your member of parliament on why you object to this uh, Bill C eleven. So, for those of you that are watching us, the ten percent of you are in Canada, go through that process. You know, it's going to take you thirty seconds. You might as well get it done. Now, here's the thing, right? They're they're talking about. And again, when I say there, YouTube and content creators are looking this, looking at this from the angle of, well, my ad revenue is going to come down. I'm not going to get the reach that I used to get. We don't really know how this is going to affect us until the bill passes and becomes law. And that may be another year, could be two years. Um, there's a long process when it comes to um, 
proposing bills and they have critics that go up against the bills. Then they all vote on it. Then it has to go through royal assent and then it becomes law. And then there's a time frame between when it's passed and it actually becomes law. And then they start enforcing the new rules. So again, this could take another one to three years. It could take a while. Um, is it going to pass? I'm going to say yes. Um, the reason why I'm saying yes is because the last time I got involved with lobbying in a, a bill, um, I think it was 2011. It was about two years of my life that I spent mostly lobbying Bill 55. Um, it was uh, a lobbying group that I hired. I must have spent like 50 or $60,000 with the lobbyists so I could go in rooms and talk to critics. And by the way, I see, uh, who was it that mentioned Jagmeet here? So Jagmeet Singh is the uh, NDP leader. He was the critic on the bill when I was getting involved because he was an Ontario um, bureaucrat at that time. He wasn't federal. He was provincial. And he was a guy that I, like I sat across from this guy. He's a lying POS. Uh, I'm not going to get into all the details as to why, but now he's the leader of the uh, what's essentially the Socialist Party in uh, Canada, and he's partnered up with Justin Trudeau, and they have a, a coalition government now. So um, there's really nothing that elected officials can do that are opposing it if there's a coalition government that has enough seats to vote for whatever they want and push it through. So this is why coalition governments are... I mean, that's not what Canadians voted for. They voted for essentially leaders of these different parties. And when they form a coalition, then it kind of goes against the entire reason for a democratic voting process, which is kind of pointless at this stage anyway, because people don't vote for freedom anymore in Canada anyway. And in most parts of the world, they tend to vote for free shit, which is going to come at the expense of um, your privacy, which is going to come at the expense of what information you're going to receive. So it's not about Canadian broadcasting um, and making sure there's Canadian content broadcasting. If that was the case, I could go out and get a moose and sit on it and broadcast from a moose and just talk about everything while making maple syrup pancakes sort of thing, right? That's not what it's going to be about. It's like he was talking about, there's always a story behind the story. And as soon as I heard about this bill, I knew exactly where it was going and exactly what they were going to do. And they're doing the right thing, bringing this to the attention of people. Although I don't know that... Um, there's anything that folks can do again, because there's a coalition government. Um, they're going to pass this bill and it's about controlling the narrative. It's about controlling information. It's about making sure that nobody speaks out against uh, policies and, and procedures, i.e. like what happened with the truckers in Ottawa, i.e. like what happened with uh, lockdowns and the excessive amount of uh, like power that they took and control that they took away from people's lives. Like, there's, there's people complaining now incessantly about backlogs and problems at airports in Canada. There was a very popular um, video that was trending on Twitter last week, I think, um, with somebody that was traveling. He was taking a connecting flight from Western uh, Canada, and he had to stop in Toronto Pearson. He was going down to the States. And he was just going on and on about like the delays and the wait lines. And it's just absurd. Like, like people now have to get to the airport four or five hours before a flight to make it if it's an international flight, just because of all the delays and backlogs. And, you know, you've got to show proof of this and proof of that. And there's also a uh, issue with lack of staffing too, simply because a lot of people that didn't want to put a, a experimental substance in their body either quit or got laid off. So they have HR issues, you know, as far as manning what needs to be manned for the extra levels of security and, you know, under the guise of protection for us here. And Canada is one of the few countries that's, that, that still has that, that, that absurdity when it comes to travel. It's dumb. Open up the damn country. Let people come and visit. Let them spend their, you know, travel dollars here. Let people leave. But, you know, still we're in a state of fear because of a purported pandemic. So this is the next thing that's coming. It's, you know, well, when you speak out against something like that, then we have to control that information. You know, it's hilarious because I did that playing the wind podcast with that doctor that shall not be mentioned about a week ago, which, you know, got me locked out of the account for a week. And that was YouTube locking me out because it purportedly violated uh, misinformation. I'm not sure how the guy's a qualified doctor and treats patients and knows exactly what he's talking about. But that was them censoring that. And now they're saying, well, the Canadian government is trying to censor information. So you as creators need to say something and you as creators, you know, need to speak up. 
it's it's because something in that bill, I think YouTube uh, feels like it's going to violate their interests and be and be problematic for them. Um, I haven't read it yet. I don't really have any interest in reading it because it's just one of those things where it's like, well, what are you going to do, Rich? Why don't you lobby against this? Why don't you fight it sort of thing? And I'll tell you what the solution is in a, a minute. Um, what's Leon saying here? Hey, Rich, it's refreshing to hear your content in comparison to the other Red Pill content. It's been, uh, sorry, that has the risk of overcomplicating. The core message is all that matters. Simplicity is a message I needed and all the best from Holland. Yeah, that's that's what I try to deliver, guys. You know, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of BS out there and fluff, but that's just me. Um, keep it simple, man. You know, the Oakham's razor, you know, the, the, the simplest, uh, solution is often the one that you want to go for. You know, the most straightforward, the simplest solution is what you want to go for. So I'll tell you what we did when it came to bill 55, when it came to the provincial parliament, um, spent better part of two years and shitloads of money trying to fight it. They passed it anyway. Uh, the bill critics, including Jagmeet Singh, said that they were going to oppose it and vote against it. It still got passed, um, and it and it and it became law. Um, generally speaking, you know, there's people that have problems for every solution, and then there's me that just finds you know solutions to problems. That's just how I operate. I've just gotten good at it. I'm not too worried about this. Is it going to affect things when it passes? Yeah, probably. Is there going to be something in the legislation um, that's going to offer a carve out, perhaps. But there's other solutions to take. Like people say, oh, Rich, why don't you just leave Canada? And I'm going to say it again. I spent about two years fighting for shared custody. I'm here. I have a kid. I have a kid to raise. That is my priority. The only thing that's a problem here now is like, okay, well, what if they like, what if it lowers your ad revenue? It, th like to me, it's like ad revenue. Okay. It's a part of the business. Ads run on my videos. That's fine. If that drops or drops down to zero, that would suck. It's not the end of the day, though. Um, I'll still be fine, right? Um, the problem is, I think, if it boils down to reach at the end of the day, where you can't reach people that want to watch, like if they're not going to let YouTube run ads because it's not Canadian content, I'm not sitting on my um, moose, you know, while I'm broadcasting while making maple syrup pancakes. And they, and they ding you, that's not that big of a deal. But if the reach gets pulled back as well, that could be problematic. So we don't know how this is going to unfold. We do know that they don't listen to constituents and they don't generally listen to people that lobby against bills. And as we saw that, whoever that dude was, that was the Canadian guy talking to parliament about the bill itself and why it would be problematic for Canadian content creators. It's not something they care about. All they care about is control and they care about the you know, the control of the narrative. And then they're going to paint it under the guise of, well, this is good for Canadian and Canadian content. And, you know, we have to make sure that we maintain Canadian. But how are we Canadian anymore when Trudeau's best buddy is Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum? And he's hanging out with all these like elitists and globalists from around the world um, where their agenda is exactly the same, right? It's control, take away power, da, da, da. you know, you get the idea. Um you know, it, some people say it's a psyop and, you know, there's parts of that where it's like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. Let me just go to the, the chat here for a second and see what else we got. How does he get voted out? Um, he is the prime minister, I think, until 2024, 2025 is the next election. He called an early election during the pandemic strategically uh, to extend his term, which he successfully did. Again, if 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 Canadians didn't want this, they wouldn't vote for it, but they love this guy. The vast majority of Canadians keep voting for this bullshit and, you know, lock me down harder, daddy, you know, steal my privacy and my information harder, daddy, you know, take away more of my freedoms, daddy sort of thing. And it's like, that's what they go for. Hey guys, I really hope that you enjoyed that short clip. If you did, consider supporting the creation of content by checking out my supplement line pinned in the top comment below of this video in the comments. There's a link to the unpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop. Uh, when you click through, you'll be able to land over here and the entire lineup is broken down by category that it performs best in, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, your foundational essentials for health, immune health, performance, and testosterone support. If you check out with coupon code ALPHA10, you'll get 10% off on your first order. There's also the option to use the subscribe and save model where regular shipments will be sent over to you on a regular basis, and that gives you a little bit of a discount, and your supplement facts are always broken down over here. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have an awesome day. And again, check out that link. It's pinned in the top comment below in this video. Peace out.